since at least last year, RT has used people living and working inside the U.S. to facilitate contracts with American media figures. The two Russian nationals are accused of running a $10 million scheme to fund and direct a U.S. company producing videos, mostly directed to the publicly stated goals of the Russian government, according to... This has got my uh, hair up in a tiff. This has my squirrel tail pointed towards the sky. This has me reaching for a metaphor that I can't quite nail. Let's go talk about it. Today is Tuesday. September 17th. Damien, what's on your mind? What's on my mind is this, uh, this book I haven't been paid to show. It's Autocracy Inc., The Dictators Who Went Around the World by Ann Applebaum. Now, Ann Applebaum is a Pulitzer Prize winning academic and historian who has been tracking the rise and fall and current steadfast rise of dictatorships and authoritarian figures across the world, whether you're talking about theocracies like we have in Iran, you're talking about a monolithic, uh, the monolithic rule of the Chinese Communist Party, whether you're talking about the single person totalitarian rule of Vladimir Putin, and arguably China is now a single person ruled country under Xi Jinping, or you're talking about kleptocracies ruled by a minor elite, like a small country of elites, like it's Zimbabwe or Angola, or you're talking about broken states like current Venezuela under Maduro or North Korea under Kim Jong-il. Those are all some version of what she calls autocrats. And the enemy is us, you, um, pretty much everybody in this room, uh, people who live in the democratic world, I try not to use the word West in the book because I think it's broader than that. And also I would like to include the democratic oppositions. Isn't it Kim Jong-un? Kim Jong-un. I'm not the historian, Keith. I'm just the non-Pulitzer Prize winning, non-academic, small town lawyer who lives in his mom's basement. That's what I am. But here's what I've come to understand. All of those different, very different systems, they want a world free, free of any consequences for actions taken against the will of the people that they rule. Free of any consequences from looting government coffers. Free of any consequences of any and all kinds of corruption. And unlike the autocrats of the 1980s, 1970s, those cartoon autocrats that we're used to. I always remember this uh, Smurf cartoon where a Smurf uh, becomes, a, becomes a dictator of sorts. He becomes a king and he wants everybody to build a castle. And I just remember in my mind. Presenting our new leader in his even newer palace, King Smurf. I see him, but I don't believe him. My fellow Smurfs, your labors have produced a palace of great beauty, and I would say thanks if I didn't deserve every bit of it. Those sorts of uh, cartoon dictators is not what we're dealing with anymore. The rise of a connected world, one that has tens of thousands of satellites floating above the stratosphere, one that has an internet of things, one that has an internet, one that has... Uh, cell phones in billions of hands around the world, one that has billions of cameras and other monitoring installations all around the world. That's a profoundly different set of autocrats that we're dealing with today than 40 years ago. And what they share in common, according to Ian Applebaum, are several key strategems, stratagems. Thank you. Keith is like, yes, it's stratagems. <laughs> Autodidact, folks. That's when you teach yourself to read. English is my second language. Uh, so stratagems and several uh, character traits and several goals in common. The foremost, most important goal is that they want to create a world order 
that supports the alternate reality that they've already created. In other words, they want to create an alternate world order that supports the alternate reality they've already created for themselves. The alternate reality, of course, these elites, rich, powerful figures, these kleptocrats and theocrats and uh, rogue state officials, is that they live in a world without consequence where they get to be rich and powerful and nobody gets to question them and they live without shame in that power and wealth. Well, the world order they want to create is an alternative to the democratic world order, no matter how flawed, that has brought much good to the world over the past 100 years. And the reason that I'm thinking about this is that this is not a passive interest of these autocratic states. This is not an individual interest. It's a networked, cohesive interest that uses media, that uses influencers, that uses all sorts of channels that exist in this superlinked world to not only tamp down dissent in the countries that these autocrats rule or terrorize, and not only to prevent them from having real competition in those countries, but also to undermine the idea of democracy and freedom in countries that are not yet like them. And this book is so important to me, and Anne Applebaum's work over the years has been so important to me, because if you have eyes and ears, then you've noticed that things here in America and here in Europe have gotten a little weird. When you boil it down, it's basically just a collection of gigantic weirdos. Trump and his cavalcade of goons are weird. Crime-adjacent weirdos. Trump's gang of weirdos. The rotating cast of fringe right-wing weirdos. We have all of a sudden started to exhibit some of the symptoms of countries where autocrats rule. And that was brought to the fore by that video we saw at the start of, the, uh, at the start of this episode, which has to do with a big, big story. It's bigger than big. And it's bigger than, than it already uh, it has been made out to be by various social media and news channels. A Russian government effort to stoke divisions in the U.S. using front organizations and social media prominent right-wing influencers. It involves thousands of American global influencers, people who are associated, in America at least, with uh, right-leaning causes. I'm a guy that believes in healthy conservatism. This is radical right causes that are big names. People like Tim Pool, perhaps even all the way up to people like Joe Rogan. And what's been happening is that they have been either the willing, perhaps unwilling, but I'm willing to bet willing, collaborators in a misinformation campaign that is perhaps years long. One that pushes the government interests of certain countries, most notably Russia, and cuts against key values that we have here in America, whether they are the rule of law, belief in equality, or whether they are the simple belief that elections should be open and fair and that the person who wins is truly the winner. Makes me think about a misjudgment that we made years ago as, let's say, the Western democratic world when we thought that our invention of the internet was going to bring dictatorships to heel. It was going to bring democracy and enlightenment to heretofore oppressed and unenlightened people of the world. China was going to fall just like the Soviet Union and become one of the member states in the democratic order. Of course, June 4th, 1989 happened. And of course, now we have Xi Jinping who has rebuilt China in his vision of one man rule. There are countless other examples, but we equally misjudge something more important, something that we actually misjudged so badly it wasn't even on our radar. That internet is not a one-way street. Internet doesn't come from America and then just go to other countries with whatever ideas we want to export. The internet turns out, sends things in every direction. Wherever there's a connection, information can go in and out. It works. It works. It works. We didn't count on the fact that countries that were autocratic could export their ideas to us. 
that they would use the internet, that they would use satellite communications, that they would use our cell phone connected culture, that they would use those vectors as vectors of attack, to attack with their ideas about what the world should be and who it should be ruled by. And so this story, the story of these influencers influenced themselves by Russian agents. There's a key document. It's from a related indictment uh, of a company that uh, was run by the Kremlin. And it's a 300 page indictment brought by the DOJ, investigated by the FBI, remarkable in scope. And what it details is Operation Doppelganger. Now a doppelganger is like a clone. For those of you who know Keith Higgins, he's a doppelganger of Dave Matthews. For others of you who might be magic card nerds, you'll recall the Vesuvian doppelganger who looks a lot like Keith. And what this operation details is actually kind of three or four separate operations. One of them is called Operation Good Old USA, where the whole point is to use every media channel at their disposal, every social network at their disposal, and using very sophisticated tactics, uh, try to make America think that the only thing that matters, try to make Americans think that the only thing that matters is the USA, that they shouldn't be involved in, say, uh, the war in Ukraine. And one of the ways that these ideas are going to get disseminated, disseminated is through this influencer network that has apparently been cultivated over time and at great expense. I encourage you to check out this document, which we've linked in this video. The other thing that's remarkable, right? There's other operations. You can kind of see their names above me, I hope, and you can read the document yourself. But the other thing that's remarkable is the collection of exhibits at the back, which shows actual documents from this, you know, Kremlin agency translated helpfully into English, which show how this will be carried out. They have templates for different memes that they're going to use to get inside of people's minds. The memes have like blank spaces, say congressperson's name here or political leader's name here. The idea being that the memes are reusable because all of the stories that are gonna be published are themselves fake. So it doesn't matter who you insert to target. They have a section on uh, making Americans believe that there's a cadre of Mexicans who believe that Mexico should retake parts of America. You know, And they have templates that they've created for these fake news stories. They also have a collection of already placed fake articles. They've been placed in places like the Washington Post more than once. The names of the influencers, who themselves seem to be post columnists, are blacked out, but I'm sure they can be found by intrepid sleuths. They have postings on Meta, meaning Facebook. They have postings on other smaller newspapers, again, already published by and through the influence of this Kremlin-backed network. What they have a lot of are stories that target people's fear and hate, let's face it, of immigrants. Whether it's immigrant attacks on citizens of a particular country or it's immigrant invasions, the Kremlin's got you covered. Those are the types of stories that they're looking to place to foster a sense of anger, a sense of disunity, a sense of being attacked so that we, in the Western world get put on the defensive. Now, I'm not saying that a lot of that's not true. I cover that extensively in 10 billion people on this channel, these different stories of travel. But I am saying that there are sophisticated, autocrat-funded operations that make those stories less humane. And I think it's important for us in this Western democracy to, yes, preserve maximum ability to speak freely. That's absolutely true. When I look at somebody like uh, Elon Musk, who says, I wanna create a, uh, I wanna create x.com, x Twitter, whatever the heck he calls it now. I, I, I wanna make this a max, maximum free speech zone. Okay, partner, I'm with you. That's important. But you can't do it with your head in the sand about the fact that your maximum free speech zone is currently fully inhabited by bad faith actors, autocrats, who intend to infect American conversation and the conversation of the Western world with ideas, thoughts, feelings that are ultimately damaging to the idea of democracy itself. One of the 
things that we find in these documents is that it's not just the Washington Post getting affected, it's also social media companies like Facebook, Meta, and Telegram. And recently, the Telegram's CEO, who's Russian, was arrested in Paris. Tonight, Telegram CEO Pavel Durov in custody for alleged offenses related to his widely popular private messaging and social media app. And I'm sure that Elon Musk looks at that and says, hey, that was a good thing because this guy clearly seems to have been working with Russian agents. Oh, I see. He thinks it's the downfall of democracy. Okay, so see, Elon, this is what I was talking about. When I was talking about earlier, you need to think about this in, in a way that's befitting of a uh, global genius who owns two-thirds of uh, the satellites orbiting the Earth and uh, all of the satellites orbiting the war in Ukraine and Russia, which you once wanted to turn off because you claimed that uh, you wanted to stop war, but really it led to the resulting uh, uh, decimation of a Ukraine offensive that would have pushed back Russians from Ukraine lines. Anyway, I, I'm not sure if there's a conflict there, buddy, but you might want to work on it. Autocracy Inc. is an important book. It's an important book because it helps me remember, and I think it'll help you remember, that we are fighting for something every day, and we need to fight with our eyes open. And that's the preservation of this democracy that we live in and the democracies that live in this world with us. If one falls, others will fall. It worries me, it should worry you, but there's a lot that we can do about it. Democracy requires something almost inhuman of all of us. You know, it requires, in order for it to work, it requires this kind of consensus. And that's what's on my mind.